did Largs have something to do with the Allied victory of World War II? We'll have to wait and see. We're in Largs. Hello. And I have a story to tell you about this really cool town that I'm pretty sure you've never heard of. So let me tell you about how this tiny town of Largs beat the Vikings and was the reason that the Allied forces won World War II. Let's explore. I need to tell you a story today about some Vikings. I mean, who doesn't want to learn about Vikings? Just look at this. This whole tower was erected <laughs> because of an awesome Viking war that happened here. Around 800 AD, the Vikings defeated the Picts. Now, as we know, the Picts were the original people who settled here in Scotland. That doesn't mean that all of the Scottish were defeated, though. No, there were still other people that was up here. But the royal family of the Picts were defeated. So the Vikings started to roll on in. They knew two things. Sea. And trees. And I mean, right now, Scotland is only like an hour flight away from Norway. It's really close and it made it so convenient for the Vikings to just pop on over and explore. Now, over the next couple hundred years, the Vikings continue to send people over into Scotland to try to conquer it. In fact, a lot of the Hebride Islands that are on the very west coast of Scotland and the Isle of Man, which is kind of south and west of Scotland, were all occupied by the Vikings. In addition to, a, ooh, there's a bunch of shells. Look at these, you guys. Look at that. You're really pretty. Are you? Look, look, look. Let's look at this shell. That's such pretty mother of pearl. I don't know if the camera's catching this, but it's like sparkly and iridescent. And there's, wow. You guys, these are so pretty. Look at this guy. Look how tiny he is. Okay, maybe the Vikings were here like to gather beautiful seashells in addition to trees and sea. Anyway, we got distracted. Okay, let's finish our Viking story. So for hundreds of years, the Vikings and the Scottish people, especially the original residents of the Hebrides, lived in peace. They didn't kind of know who was in charge and as an island dweller, you kind of just are chill and go with the flow. But not if you're a king. And that is where we're gonna enter our cool story of the Vikings versus the Scottish. I found the world's largest banana slug. Banana slug. Okay, we're not gonna step on that and we're just gonna let it rest in peace because someone else had a snack. Viking Tower. So let's go explore this town as we learn a little bit more about the Vikings, a little bit more about the Scottish and appreciate this awesome tower that was erected. <laughs> for the war that the Scottish won in 1263. Now King Hakon Hakonson, the Viking King Hakon Hakonson, was a little bit old school in his thoughts. He wanted to make his empire as big as possible. Sound like a little bit Roman Empire to you? Well, it kind of should. So, in the fall, the summer months of 1263 AD. He was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna surround Scotland with all of my ships. I'm gonna send over a hundred ships into the Firth of Clyde, which is what we see here, probably only with about 20 ships of like recreational quality. Over 20,000 men were on these ships and they stood there. Well. The Scottish looked at this massive fleet of ships. They didn't have an army to fight against that, much less get their boats in an already crowded bay or firth. I'm not sure what a firth is, but that's a firth. So the Scottish king at the time was an awesome, chill dude. King Alex III 
was 20, 22, barely even an adult at the time. We're going to stand on this rock and you can stare at the beautiful sea. Barely even adult at the time. And he was like, you know what? The Viking King. Oh, that happens soon. I'm smarter than you are. What King Alex III also knew was that the Scottish weather is a bitch. So he waited, he bought time, he tried to be diplomatic in achieving peace with the Vikings. Talking, oh, maybe we could exchange this island for this island, or what if I send you trees and you send me nothing? King, the Viking King, all oh, happens soon. Said, no, I want your entire country. Well, King Alex III bought so much time. Oh, look, there's animals in the rock here. Animal, bunka bunka, bunka bunka bunka. I don't think they're alive because it's like there's all sorts of other stuff on it. I keep getting distracted with the cool nature here. The Viking King would not have it. But what King Alex III was really doing was buying time until the Scottish winter came. See, we're on the west coast of Scotland and storms are really big here. Like you've probably will notice if you haven't noticed by now in the edit, this was filmed over multiple days because the weather keeps getting terrible and soaking my equipment or I keep getting cold and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go out in that weather for a video. And it's summer. Just think of this place in the winter with waves crashing against the rocks. The Viking King, the Viking King, all happened soon. Did not think of that, but Alex III did. So he bought himself some time. So when all of the Viking ships were in this firth, mommy nature came to Scotland's defense. And overnight, it wrecked all of the ships on the shore. In the morning, the Viking King all happened soon. went on to the shore to try to salvage a shipwreck and salvage all of the goods that had gone on the shore. He took about a thousand men, maybe more, maybe less. Well, this gave time for the Scottish army to start to beat down the Vikings and, you know, do what you do in war. The Vikings retreated. Some say the Scottish won. Some say the Vikings won. Some say it was a draw. What we do know is that the Viking king, the Viking king, all happened soon, was going to try again the next year. He was already primed on the weather. He knew what he needed to do. He needed to attack sooner. And he knew King Alex's biggest strength, his mind. So the next year came. The Viking king, the Viking king, all happened soon, died. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was just old and grumpy and just died. So the Viking King's son was really not into war. He was more like Alex. Hey, let's just uh, chill, watch some baby goats, smoke some plants on a hillside and grow tomato plants. Wait, no, that's probably what I would do if I were them. King Magnus never finished attacking. And in fact, a couple years later, gave all of the Hebrides and Isle of Man back to Scotland and pulled his army and his troops out. Otherwise, what we could be walking in today would be Norway. Now that's a story from the Scottish side. There's a story from the Norwegian side. I think I'm about to fall in the water at some point. Bunk, bunk, ow, pokey rock. Bunk, bunk. Do we wanna go down the white rock or the red rock? Well, we know the white rock is pokey with animal defense. Welcome to Larks. We're gonna go explore this town, see some Viking stuff, and I wanna show you one of the coolest places that we have here in Scotland. Now, where is Largs, you may ask? Well, it's about an hour away from Glasgow. Represents. And I have to show you this very beautiful train line. So, there's this train line, one-way train, that you get to ride on if you come here. And it's beautiful the entire way. You're riding with mountains on one side, sea on the other side. Pretty awesome. If you are new to my channel, I'm gonna tell you again, because it's the coolest piece of lore ever. So, 
What is a thistle? Let me show you. Let me get there first. Thistle. These are just a couple of them. Usually these guys grow in huge, huge beds of beautiful purple flowers that you can see here. And they're really pokey. See? Thistle. So why is a thistle flower super cool here in Largs? Well, it's one of the things that defeated the Vikings. See, as lore goes, the Vikings were sleeping one night. Oh, thistle patch, see? All of these flowers, all of these flowers helped to defeat the Vikings. Now, as the Vikings were sleeping one night. Hi, want to be in the vlog? What's your name? You're very wet. <laughs> I think that dog wanted me to play fetch with him and not necessarily be a movie star. Anyway, the Vikings are sleeping as you do at night. And the Scottish needed something to identify when they were there. See, there wasn't like GPS and heat sensitive technology and heat sensing glasses and all sorts of drones and that sort of stuff. And no. But what the Scottish people had above the Vikings was really hard feet. See, Caledonia was a Roman slang term for people with hard feet. And I like to think it's because the Scottish people could walk on thistles and not know they were walking on thistles. So, one night, they gathered a bunch of thistles together and they laid them out on the forest floor. And over time, they started to hear the, the Vikings, ow, ow. And that is where the thistle started to become like the first alert system for the Scottish army. So I think that's pretty cool snacks, snacks. Guys, it's a season of Scottish snacks. And if it were closer, we would try one. Let's try to look for one that's closer because I'm not into fence hopping today. Anyway, that is also why Largs is super famous for the thistle, because not only did it defeat the Vikings, probably had something to do <gasps> snacks with the thistle plant. The thistle flower is the oldest country flower in the world. So now you know all sorts of lore. We're going to try this. We are going to try this snack, because I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's pretty good. We're going to try this one, too. That's pretty good, too. Let's try this one. Uh-oh, that one fell apart. Okay. Now I'm nourished. Let's continue to explore this town. Now was Largs always this beautiful seaside resort town with these awesome Victorian houses and Victorian walls and Victorian walks and Vic, no. No, 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 no. The Victorians built it. See, Queen Victoria loved Scotland. And so part of her railway expansion across the UK meant building railways and lines into some of the more, more or less, into some of the less traveled places in Scotland, including Largs. So this, this place has been a port and mostly a seaside resort since it was founded in 1899. I mean, can you imagine being a Victorian? Coming here, yeah, with your horse, going swimming in the sea. Maybe carriages are parked alongside here instead of cars. I mean, that'd be pretty awesome. Maybe there would be some like bath, bath structures or something around here. You would have the most expensive people, the most wealthy people staying. Hey, hi, do you want to be in the vlog? Okay. You're very cute. I don't know how you stay so clean. <laughs> Over here, you would have the most affluent people staying 
in these cute little Victorian structures. Just a hop away from the beach. You could park your horse right there. And beach right there. Or maybe they just walked since there was a train that came here. No, they probably had like horse Uber. Then the Victorians, they were a shrewd one. Maybe they invented Uber. So one thing that I really like about Largs is that they use green space and open space so beautifully. I mean, look at this park. There's all these nice benches and they're placed so far apart that you don't have to hear or see your neighbor if you don't want to. Introvert heaven. Okay, now you've probably seen all of these little shadowy islands. I hope the camera picks that up. In the distance. It's a really good question to ask. Can you go to those islands? Well, yeah. So there's ferries that run back and forth from a bunch of different seaports throughout the day. If you have a car, they run a little bit less frequently, but on foot, yep. Take your bicycle, yep. And one thing I want to point out, I mentioned the ports. So here we see all sorts of an old port. Quite possibly from the 1940s. What was it? Did Largs have something to do with the Allied victory of World War II? We'll have to wait and see. Did you know that Scotland invented golf? Yep. So I think it's really cool that here in Largs, we have a free open golf course. I assume it's free. An open golf course, a little putting green. Why did they invent golf? I mean, look at this grass. Now, it's really, really, really rainy here. The grass always stays green. There's no irrigation systems around it, like there are in like deserty parts of the world. And I mean, you can just put sheep on the field and the sheep eat the grass. So I think it's a fantastic use of nature and of rolling hills and of an adventure that you could have basically with a piece of wood, a little teeny tiny ball, and grass. Okay, now we're gonna walk down where the fairies are. You have to check this out. Cars going on ship. So that is one of the ships with cars that runs a little less frequent than ships with just people. And then all those are the people. But where I want to take you, um, we're going down to the end of this pier because I'm gonna take you on a future trip on the Paddle Steamer Waverly. Now this boat is pretty epic and you'll learn a little bit more about the boat when we're on the boat. But let's get to the end of the dock and jump cut to me of the future. Where is the steam? We'll have to find out. Guys, look at this. There's a man. We're on board. Let's go inside this little house. Oh, today's cruising ride. Okay. So we are, we're here. Come right forward, ladies and gentlemen, and use both the gangways, please. Come right forward on Mark's Pier. There are two gangways. So there's a dining saloon menu. So if we want to eat some food, we can have some breakfast rolls available until 11. We can have hot meals. Ooh, fish and chips, maybe. We can have some soup. Or we can have a variety of different beers. This is... This is a two-lane stair down on the right, up on the left. And some people did well on their tests. Ooh. Long forward bar ladies. I am a lady. Maybe that means I'm invited to the long forward bar. Look what we found! Thank you. 
Okay, now let's go explore the rest of the ship. Oh, ladies. Goodbye, camera. Okay, so I think in the like 80s or 90s, the steamship Waverly was purchased for one pound to be refurbished. Now it took millions of pounds to actually refurbish it. In this area, you see all of the donors helped to donate to refurbish it. And then over here, we see the whole history of it. We can see it under Tower Bridge. We can see it around the Isle of Wight. And here the whole history. Okay, so we've also found another place where we can have some food here. Here, it looks like there's a massive uh, alcohol and champagne menu. So that could be fun. I like this ship. I feel tall. I found nature. Check this out. Oh, that's the other way. <laughs> well, now, now we can wait. <laughs> okay, we're now going to come over here because I see a sparkle sign. So this vessel replaces the Clyde Steamer Waverly, which was built in 1899 and served as a minesweeper during World War I and was sunk by the enemy at Dunkirk in World War II. I found a telephone. I wonder if I can send secret messages down here, if someone will send me secret messages back up, or if it's just the bell that rings whenever we take off. I would like to be, ah, not to be deaf. I just punched the telephone. Okay. Oh, we see another bigger telephone. Hello. 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 I wonder if it'll pick it up. We're going to see. Can you hear? When I put my ear up there, I can hear. So I'm wondering if the mic is catching any of this. Look at all of these telephones. They were very good communicators. I found a sparkle. Sure. If you know what this is, drop a comment because I don't. It's very windy out here. But I thought it was Scottish as fuck to have a tenant on top of the steamship wave really. And you can see the waves are starting to pick up a little bit. The flag is pretty much straight which means that mommy nature is a turning it on look at these waves you guys i'm becoming a much better pirate than i thought i would be i'm only like 50 percent sick look at this oh check out our queue yeah we're going sailing but there's no sails so i don't know we're going steaming! Look at these waves. They're pretty large. It's kind of weird that they're... I was going to say that they're not coming inside. And one just came inside. Let's see if we can catch one. Ooh, wave! Right there. Wave! If we keel again, we're going to get more waves. Wave. We're taking on water! Duck and cover! Duck and cover! The ship is drunk. I'm gonna graduate pirate school today. Oh, look at that. How peaceful.
beautiful. Oh. I believe that's how we exit. Oh, beer though. Let's go find some treasure. Oh. Okay, we need to find something to hold on to. Because, mateys, the sea is rough and angry. Poseidon is having his revenge on Aquarius. Ooh. Woo! The hole is taking on water. Okay, so if we were still in Ireland, they would have canceled the ship. No, we're in Scotland. The ship sails! This is quite cool over here. We can see the little panels going. I'm not the best pirate, but I did what you do. Whenever you're in a nefarious situation, you go watch the people driving the ship. So I went down to the galley and I'm watching like the engineers drive the ship and they were loving their life. Now I can imagine on a day like this, where the water's calm, where there's no waves, it'd be a pretty boring job. But oh my God. So on a day like today, you know, when the sea is calm, a boring job, but when the waves are rough and you have to figure out where's the waves coming from, where's the wind coming from, how am I not gonna sink this paddle steamer? That's when it gets fun. So it was great. I think that you absolutely should go on this steamer any chance you get. Now it sells all around the British Islands. Now one thing about this area, there's so much ice cream. So if you're into sweets or if you're into ice cream, you're in the right place. I will not tell you how it is because I'm kind of not into that thing, but there's always long lines outside them. So I'm gonna say, it's probably pretty good. Arcades for young people that are below a certain height level. And they're usually empty. But to be fair, it's not evening. So I guess they could get more, more busy as the day goes on. But I think it's super cool that you can just like hop on a ride, do something as your you know, parents have an ice cream or walk on the pier. Pretty awesome town. So about 50 years after the Victorians had laid the railway track and made this a beautiful resort town with hotels just lining the ocean side as you can see here a lot of them are still hotels some of them have been turned into restaurants or event halls where you do like weddings and like big stuff that you would want a lot of people for that's sounding like a really bad idea anyway hotels well world war ii was at its height it was around 1940 winston churchill who was voted to be the best British person ever a couple years ago um, from the knowledge test. He was like, you know what? We need to plan. But they couldn't let anybody else in on the plan. So where could they go? Where could all of the people on the Allied forces go to plan in secret and be hidden? Why, of course, in the town that beat the Vikings. Next to the Firth of Clyde, the Clyde Firth, whatever. So Winston Churchill gathered all of his friends and he's like, guys, I have this amazing idea. We are going on holiday. 
And his friends looked at him and were like, what? And he's like, yeah, I know this town. It's hidden. It's secret. It's really hard to get to. And if any of the baddies were going to come up here, there'd be so many different radar towers and all sorts of other things where they would see them. So all of the world leaders gathered in this area. They booked out like two of the hotels and they just stayed there for six years, three years, for three years. Between three and six years, they stayed there and they planned out the D-Day attack on the Normandy beaches. Where would the US forces go? Where would the Canadian forces go? Where would the British forces go? All planned here. Oh, we're doing handstands. Can I go do handstands? They also put in a, uh, like an airplane landing strip so they could take off airplane fighter jets from here. They built this beautiful bay. Now this had been built before to have ships. Hi, hi, how's it going? Now this had all been built before. Um, but they made it like war, war ready, war prime ready. So even ships could sell off from here. The airplane base that they built actually took airplanes off from here that landed in Reykjavik over in Iceland. So it's a pretty epic spot of a place that won both the Viking War in 1263 and then it was crucial for the victory of the Allied forces in World War II. Now, I don't know about you, but all of this talk of Vikings has me really interested in exploring Norway. I think I know where we're going next. Like, subscribe, and see you next week in Norway. I'm gonna pretend like it is. Let's see if it. Is it? Oh, 